Good morning, everyone. Let us begin our morning worship with the lighting of the Christ candle and the fellowship candles. Christ candle is a sign to us that Jesus Christ has come into this world as the eternal light. And the fellowship candles remind us that Jesus' people are the people of light in this world. So as we light the Christ candle today, let us hear the voice of Jesus say, I am the light of the world. And as we light the fellowship candles, let us also hear the voice of Jesus say, you are the light of the world. I greet to you all watching our service this morning on YouTube and wish you a very warm welcome on this very beautiful day to give God worship and to give God praise. Our announcements uh, remain the same as per the fact that we are closed now until further notice. We do not have much in the way of activities going on at this time, so uh, there is not much to announce in that regard. Just want to encourage you all, us all, to do everything to remain safe and to keep each other safe during this trying time. Let us begin today with the call to worship. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Come, walk in green pastures. We follow the gospel, the good shepherd. Come, lie down in green pastures. We trust the good shepherd. Come, dine at the table of abundance. We are fed by the good shepherd. Come, dwell in God's house. We live in the Good Shepherd's care. Our opening song for today, The Strife is O'er.
Let us offer up the prayers of adoration, invocation, and confession. Loving God, our good shepherd, you nourish our lives and lead us into green pastures. You restore our souls with rest and peace. You give us true joy so that our cups overflow with goodness. You walk with us through the darkest valleys, giving us courage and strength. At all times and in all circumstances and in all places, you are with us. And so we praise and worship you, holy God, now and always. As you are present with us on this day, we pray that you will lead us in holiness and righteousness. Bless us with your word of truth and with your spirit of peace and the power that we may worship you not only with our words and our thoughts, but also with our hearts and lives this day and henceforth. Gracious and loving God, we confess that often we have not shown your love to others, even though we claim it for ourselves. You have called us to show mercy, but too often we are quick to judge others. We have been called to follow Jesus, but instead we follow our own plans and desires. Forgive us for failing and falling short of your glory and renew a right spirit within us. We ask you these mercies through the risen Christ, our Redeemer, Jesus. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. Jesus says, a thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it in all its fullness. We know from the scriptures that it is not God's will that any of us should perish, but that we all may come to repentance and are forgiven our sins. To all who turn to the Lord then, he says, your sins are forgiven. He also says, follow me. Thanks be to God. This prayer is the Lord Jesus Christ taught his disciples to pray.
We welcome our children this morning and we hope that you enjoy what we have in store for you. Stand right up and turn around, wave your hands and touch the ground. Aren't you glad your strength comes from the Lord? Pull your ear, tap your toes, wink your eye and touch your nose. Aren't you glad your strength comes from the Lord? You are my strength. Yes, you are my strength. Take a bow and pinch your chin, flap your arms and give a grin. Aren't you glad your strength comes from the Lord? Clap your hands, stomp your feet, jump way up and take your seat. Aren't you glad your strength comes from the Lord? You are my strength. Yes, you are my strength. Glad your strength comes from the Lord. Pull your ear, tap your toes, wink your eye, and touch your nose. Aren't you glad your strength comes from the Lord? You are my strength. Yes, you are my strength. You are my strength. Lord, you are. children's time. I have three little pigs with me here today. Of course, what does that remind us of? The story of the three little pigs. And it's a classic story and one of my favorites. I'd like to retell it to you today. So the story begins with the mother pig sending her three little pigs out into the world to make their own fortunes. The first little pig built himself a house of straw. The second little pig built a house of sticks and the third little pig built a house of bricks. The big bad wolf went to the first little pig's house and knocked on the door. Little pig, little pig, let me in, he said. The little pig answered, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, replied the wolf. The first little pig's house of straw was not very strong, so the wolf easily blew it down and the little pig ran to safety at the second little pig's house. The wolf went to the second little pig's house and knocked on the door. Little pig, little pig, let me in. And the little pig answered, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, replied the wolf. The second little pig's house was made of sticks and it was not very strong. So the wolf blew it down and the two little pigs ran to their brother's house. The wolf went to the third little pig's house, knocked on the door. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, answered the little pig. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, replied the wolf. No matter how hard he tried, the wolf, he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed some more and he could not blow the brick house down. The wolf decided to go down the chimney, but the three little pigs were smarter. They had put a boiling pot of water at the bottom. Youch! cried the wolf. Having outsmarted the big bad wolf, the three little pigs began to sing. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf? Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? So there, there have been many stories written about a big bad wolf. You have probably heard about the little red riding hood. 
Peter and the Wolf? And how about the boy who cried wolf? But did you know that Jesus once told a story about a big bad wolf? And in this story that Jesus told, the good shepherd is him and the sheep are us. The wolf in Jesus' story is God's enemy. Here's what Jesus said in the Bible. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. A hired hand will run away when he sees a wolf coming because the sheep don't belong to him and he doesn't really care about them. When the hired hand runs away, the wolf will attack and scatter the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as my father knows me, I know the father. I will lay down my life for my sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd and we are his sheep. He knows us and he loves us. He will protect us when God's enemy or anybody or the big bad wolf tries to hurt us. When we trust Jesus, we can say, who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Let's bow our heads now and pray. God, thank you for sending your son to be our good shepherd. He gave his life for us. Help us to follow him and trust him to protect us from the evil one. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now this week, I invite you to skip on over and check out the church's Kids Corner on the website or on our YouTube channel, and you'll find some new activities on the Kids Corner, craft and activities to do. Check us out. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Anne. Let us offer up the prayer for understanding. God of rest and renewal, still our hearts and minds with your spirit. Open us to receive your word so that we may come to know you more fully and follow you more faithfully. Through Jesus Christ, your living word, in whose glorious and powerful name we pray. Amen. Today's reading comes to us from first the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 through to 12, and second, the book of John, chapter 10, verses 8 through 11 through to 18. And I'll read from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priest, the family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man standing before you in good health by the name that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. And now for the reading from John. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatch, snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. 
I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning, my friends, uh, I wish to talk with you on the topic of the Good Shepherd. If I seem a little bit subdued, it's because I had a significant bit of dental surgery just a couple days ago, so I'm just a bit on the mend and sort of coming around, but I am coming along pretty well. Today marks the fourth Sunday of Easter, and we continue in the spirit of Easter. We continue in the spirit and the power of the resurrection. We continue to remember that Jesus did not only die on the cross for us, but he rose from the dead. He's ascended to the Father in heaven, and he sits on high, where he prays for us, where he watches over us, where he advocates for us. And this advocate we know as the Good Shepherd. Perhaps nobody knows this better than the shepherd and king of Israel, David himself, who penned the 23rd Psalm that we love, that brings us comfort, that gives us reassurance, that bolsters our faith. Well, here David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fare no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These were the words of David, capturing his understanding of God and by extension of Jesus Christ, who he reckons as his good shepherd, the one who takes care of us, the one who provides for us, the one who protects us from all harm and danger, the one who gives us reassurance and peace, the one who quiets our souls and restores our souls. I like the way Jesus is always pragmatic in his teaching and in his preaching, using images that his audience can readily identify. And not only identify, but identify with and relate to in their daily lives. And you know what is fascinating about, what is the fascinating thing about Jesus' teaching and preaching? They all possess certain spiritual distinctiveness 
and profound truth. In John 10, we are presented with the account of Jesus' teaching about the Good Shepherd and his flock. Jesus once again draws on an imagery that is intricately woven into the daily life of the people of Israel while depicting a profound truth. Here, Jesus paints a scenario to illustrate the unique relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. This relationship between shepherd and flock runs deep. In ancient Palestine, shepherds had a real relationship with their sheep, and it was so personal that the shepherd named his sheep and knew each sheep by name. And the sheep knew their shepherd's voice. To illustrate this point, Sarah Henrik gave an account of a preacher who talked of his life in Africa. And he told the amazing story of how the people of a village knew each other's sheep in a manner of knowing neighbors, of how neighbors know each other's children. The preacher was so amazed that villagers would from time to time ask other villagers if they had seen their sheep. It was no different in ancient Palestine. More than one flock may be kept in the same fold. Often flocks are even mixed while being watered at the well. No attempt is made to separate them. When it is time to separate the sheep, one shepherd after another would stand up and call out to their sheep. And the sheep will lift their heads. And after a scramble, each one will begin to follow their own masters. It was important that the relationship between shepherd and sheep was of this nature, because the shepherd largely depended on sheep for their living. Also, the sheep that was prone to wander and go astray without a shepherd was extremely vulnerable to harm by predators such as lions and wolves, among other dangers that come with wandering without a guide. Having therefore offered a profoundly true illustration of the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, that John says Jesus' hearers did not understand Jesus goes on to make the distinctive spiritual connection between the earthly relationship between shepherd and sheep by way of explaining that not only is the good shepherd that which tends the sheep, but he is also the gate through which the sheep goes out to find pasture and goes into the fold to find rest and shelter. In other words, Jesus is proffering to his hearers that he is the only way to life and rest for anyone who seeks such and would follow after him. From time to time, we are challenged with thoughts and questions as to whether Jesus cares about us as Christians, or even the world at large. We struggle with our faith when we are personally faced with life's adversities and setbacks. Even as we grope, as though in the darkness to find meaning to our unfortunate experiences and our general existence. Here we are tempted and we may even ask or ponder the question, is Jesus really the good shepherd? Does Jesus care about us? We struggle with our faith when we witness adversities or harrowing circumstances befalling those we know. 
or strangers even, or even ourselves, people in our neighborhood, in our community, in our city, around the world. Here again, we're tempted to, and we may even ask or ponder the question, is Jesus really the good shepherd, as he claims, the one who protects us, the one who provides for us, the one who guides us? Does Jesus really care about us? And finally, we struggle with our faith when we watch on the TV or see or read on the internet or hear over the sound waves or read in the newspapers of the different atrocities that have befallen people of all walks of life, often perpetuated by fellow humans and sometimes an act of nature. Many of us might even struggle during this pandemic asking the question, is Jesus really the one who protects us? The one who is our shepherd? Does he care? Yet again, we are tempted and we may even ask this question over and over as we try to make sense of our experiences. No one knew better, as I mentioned before, than David that God that Jesus is the good shepherd of humanity, the one who cares for us, the one who provides for us, the one who protects us above and beyond that which we can even ever imagine. I want to therefore share with you further a couple of points for you to ponder. And the first is that the good shepherd has the well-being of the sheep at heart. If we ever wondered if Jesus has our well-being at heart, and if Jesus cares, we are best reminded that even while on the cross he did not consider his own suffering, but prayed to the Father for the forgiveness of the world. Like a shepherd knows the danger of caring for the sheep in the wild, Jesus knew that the world that he came to save from sin would persecute him, ridicule him, chastise him, and ultimately kill him. Yet he did not consider his own comfort before our needs, but gave himself up even to die for those who would kill him, for those who despise him for those who would betray him, for those who would want nothing to do with him. The good shepherd sacrifices for the sheep, even if it means facing the darkness of his night alone. Jesus thinks about us and cares deeply for us, even when we take no thought of our own well-being. And this is evident in his teaching where he does not draw attention to himself, but encourages us to care and to look out for each other and to live good with one another. My second point, therefore, is that the Good Shepherd provides for the sheep's needs. It is the responsibility of the shepherd to provide for the needs of the sheep. The Good Shepherd provides pasture for the sheep. For the sheep, the pasture is where life happens. It is where the sheep finds sustenance and experiences the attentive care of the shepherd. Do we not have food to eat, clothes to wear, somewhere to live, and families and friends for company? All these give us a sense of comfort and security. The provision of the Good Shepherd is nowhere better depicted than, as I mentioned before, in Psalm 23. Here David exclaims, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Is it not amazing to think of how the Lord takes care of us daily, giving us exactly what we need and then some? That even when we are faithless, the Lord remains faithful 
his promises to supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. The good shepherd causes the sheep to lack no good thing. That is why David again exclaims in Psalm 34, verse 10, those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. My third and final point is that the good shepherd also protects the sheep. Shepherding is a dangerous task because the sheep is easy prey for wild predators and thieves. Being a shepherd himself, again, no one would have known better than David. When young David stepped forward to face Goliath, the giant, he had to provide his credentials as protector of the sheep against predators such as lions and bears and wolves. For this reason, David exclaimed again in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fare no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. As the good shepherd, Jesus protects us, especially from the evil of Satan. Like the shepherd that keeps watch over the sheep at nights, while we are asleep, the angels of the Lord watch over us at the command of the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. I have had many near misses in life, and I put it to you that when I think about those near misses, I shudder and I cringe. And I conclude with certainty that it is the hand of the Lord on me protecting me while I stand here before you today. It is because of the good shepherd that I am protected, that we are protected daily. The story in the book of Acts demonstrates that Jesus, the good shepherd, continues to care for us no matter our condition, no matter our state, no matter our station in life, that Jesus looks after us, that Jesus is interested in our welfare and in our well-being, and Jesus desires that we are all well. In this story, we see that in the church, everyone had well-being, the well-being of the other at heart. We see the story of Peter speaking to the Israelites and reminding them that it was this Jesus, the good shepherd, who they killed, who healed this crippled person begging at the gate all of his life. Because of this, we go further in the story and we see that the believers provide for each other, provided for each other's needs. They shared what they had. They showed that they were renewed, renewed by a sense of being a part of the fold of Jesus Christ, of being a sheep of the good shepherd and seen to the protection, therefore, of the vulnerable, of the needy, was very important not only for the Lord, but for the Lord's servants. Jesus, the good shepherd, cares for us, for he has our well-being at heart. He provides for our needs, and he protects us daily. In the name of God, who is Father, God, who is Son, and God, who is Spirit. Amen. Let us offer up then the prayers of thanksgiving, intercession, and supplication. Gracious and loving God, as a shepherd cares for the flock, so you care for each one of us. Move in our hearts and minds and in your church and our communities and lead us to care for one another for the sake of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Today we thank you for the gift of rest. We pray for all those who are tired from work or worry, especially in these days of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
grant peace to those who are worn out with anxiety or frustration, and rest for all those who are weary from the responsibilities of their work. God, our strength, we thank you for the ways you refresh our souls. We pray for those whose lives are burdened with poverty or with uncertainty about the future beyond the pandemic. We remember all who face any sort of trial or difficulty, those who are sick, in pain, or facing death, and those who are bereaved by the loss of someone dear. For all these precious souls, be their source of healing and peace. God, our shield and defender, we thank you for staying with us when we face danger or death. We pray for all those who live in fear, prisoners, exiles, and refugees, victims of oppression, racism, discrimination, segregation, and hatred and those who know the threat of violence day after day. Be for them a steady companion in their, and their source of courage. God, our provider, we thank you for all the ways you fill our cups to overflowing. Thank you for your offering, for offering peace, and calm in the midst of turmoil for the return of happiness after times of strife and for insight emerging after confusion and indecision. Help us recognize your redeeming gifts which guide us and give us hope. Show us how we can be part of your redeeming work unfolding in the world around us. And bless the ministries undertaken through the United Church of Canada. Bless those who serve in challenging missions in Canada and around the world. Equip them well to reach out in love and respect together with local partners to accomplish your will in Jesus' name. It is through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose glorious and powerful name we pray for all these things, trusting and believing in you to hear and answer in your mercy and grace for the sake of the world you love. Amen. St. John reminds us that because Jesus laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for him. What we offer today is not such a complete sacrifice, but our gifts. Show our love, commitment, and gratitude for what Jesus Christ has given for us and to us. Let us then offer up our prayers for this week's offerings. God, you are our good shepherd, strong and wise. We offer you gifts, our gifts to you, given, asking you to bless them, multiply their impact in the world to accomplish your will. May they be used wisely in mission and service here in our community and through the outreach of your church in Canada, for the sake of Christ, our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. Friends, we have come to the end of our worship for today. We thank you for joining us. Before we bring the service to a close, our closing song is in Christ alone. We invite you to sing with us. In Christ alone, my hope is 
is found. Here is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Receive the benediction. May God lead you to places of rest and renewal. May Jesus Christ accompany you on this journey of life. And may the Holy Spirit fill your hearts with joy and generosity. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and dwell in your hearts this day and always. God be with you, my friends. Amen.